All righty, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to um, welcome all of you to our second annual District 6 Open House. Um, it's so awesome to see so many um, beautiful and wonderful and lovely faces. Um, it's an honor uh, to serve you all um, as your representative on the Forward City Council. Um, I say this all the time and I truly mean it. This isn't Jerry Williams' seat. Um, this is all of our seat. Um, and so it's important that we have um, conversations and meetings um, and town halls and open houses and what we call listening circles um, so that we can not only um, connect you with updates, important updates from the city, but also equally and maybe even more importantly, um, we can get feedback from you all um, on what things we need to continue to work on. Um, and so we have some important updates for you um, today. Um, and I also want to welcome those of you who are um, watching online. Um, this recording will be available for your neighbors um, who may not have been able to be here but really wanted to be here. Um, so um, that will be posted on the city's YouTube page. Um, and so feel free, please, please, please share that out to the, um, to the neighbors, um, to your friends, to your family, um, so that they can also get this update. Um, before we get started with today's agenda, um, I want to just give some very um, um, special shout outs uh, to several organizations um, and folks who made um, today's um, open house possible. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, uh, um, all of our city departments. Um, we have so many here today, so I'm going to read off the list. Um, we have our TPW, which is Transportation and Public Works. We have our Parks and Recreation, um, our Fort Worth Police Department. Um, our crime prevention team, the Office of Police Oversight. Um, we also have community engagement, code compliance, citizens um, uh, patrol, as well as our library. Can we give our city department and public servants a warm welcome? Um, we also have in attendance um, who are tabling here um, some amazing community organizations that um, not only our office, but the city, I um, mean, probably many of you interact with and partner with um, on a weekly basis. Um, I'd like to give a huge shout out to our two school districts um, that um, we partner with in District 6, Fort Worth ISD and Crowley ISD are here. I um, also want to give a special shout out to a Crowley ISD student. James, can you come up? So James is a, yeah, give him a... Not only does he serve on the uh, GRROTC, um, but he also serves as a school board or a student school board member um, in Crowley ISD. They didn't have that when I was in school in Crowley ISD. I wish they would have. I probably would have done it, James. Um, he says that he wants to go off um, after high school and serve in the Army. And so um, thank you, James, for your service. Uh, yeah. Um, will y'all please give him a warm welcome? Thank you again for being here. Indeed. Um, we also have some other organizations. We have JPS here, um, and they are giving exciting updates about our new Southwest Medical Home um, that's going to be here right off of Grand Barrier Road. It's going to be an amazing um, asset to our community, amazing hospital um, that will be right here in our own backyard. I um, also want to recognize the Fierce Beauties program. If you have a young daughter like I do, Janelle, um, she's 15 months old, um, but if she is interested in playing football, the Fierce Beauties <laughs> is, your, is your destination for a great after-school program um, with great sports. They travel all across the state. My um, former classmate um, and track mate um, at North Carolina High School um, uh, does an amazing job leading that program, and they compete all over the state. So um, if you know young girls who are interested in playing football, um, please connect with the Fierce Beauties table here. I mean, they will certainly get you signed up. Um, lastly but not least, um, we have uh, the One Second Collaborative here. I see two of the amazing team uh, members for the One Second Collaborative. It was an initiative that um, I was proud to be able to um, initiate in partnership with um, our Fourth Police Department and our City Council um, to partner with Tarrant County to address and prevent youth gun violence um, by investing in community organizations all across the city to help them build capacity, scale their capacity so that we can um, help save our kiddos' lives. Um, in the five years, uh, in the past five to six years, more than 100 kids have lost their lives due to gun violence, retaliatory gun violence, and cycl uh, cyclical gun violence. Um, it's something that's really important, um, I know, to all of us. And so thank you, One Second Collaborative, for the amazing work that y'all do. Um, and we um, support you 1,000%. Um, can we give one big round of applause for all of our community organizations that are here today? 
Um, we'll be hearing um, from three particular departments today, although there are many other departments here that you'll be able to continue to engage with once the event is over. Um, but we'll be hearing from our transportation and public works about important infrastructure updates and transportation safety updates and projects that are happening in our district. We'll also hear from our Parks and Recreation Department about some exciting uh, new parks that are coming um, our way. Um, and then we'll also hear from our Fort Worth Police Department um, and then I'll come back to close this out. And so without any further ado, um, please welcome our TPW team. They'll give you uh, some updates about transportation safety and infrastructure projects happening um, in District 6. Thank you all so much. Hi, my name is Patricia and this is Martin and we're both assistant directors in TPW and we're gonna tag team this presentation. I just want to start out by making you aware that we have handouts at our table at the back. We have a handout of this slide presentation. We have a handout of all the capital projects that we're going to be doing in this uh, district. And we also have a handout, um, actually this is the capital projects and the other one is all the paving uh, that we'll be doing in the district. So when, I, when you see me flash all these lists up, I, know that you can get copies with all this detail in a handout. So this is what we do in capital delivery. We do arterials, um, which is the large streets. Um, we do mobility, which I think of as like more point kind of uh, fixes, intersections, traffic signals, sidewalks, safe routes to school. We do stormwater. And then we do neighborhood streets, the smaller streets in your neighborhoods. We do bridges. And then we do pavement management, which is repair of existing streets. There is one arterial in District 6. It is Mc McCart McPherson. It includes McCart from Risinger to Twin Leaf, Twin Leaf and McPherson from West Cleburne Road to McCart. Um, it is scheduled to go to construction in January of 25. Um, it's been a long time coming. We've had a, a lot of struggle with right away, but we are taking our last um, parcel to condemnation this month. So we are very hopeful that this schedule is, is uh, gonna happen now. Uh, these are the mobility projects we have in this district. We have one in construction, three in bid awards, so they'll be starting construction later this year and we have four in design. These are our stormwater projects. There are six in this district. Three are in construction now. One is in bid award and will be going into construction later this year. And then we have two more coming after that. These are our neighborhood streets that are all currently in design in this district. And I'll pass it off to you, Martin, oh, to you. take it from here. <laughs> thank you. Once again, I'm Martin Phillips, Assistant Director in Transportation and Public Works. I'm over Transportation Management. Just to give you an idea of what I do, I'm, I say we handle everything above the pavement. We don't, do, uh, we don't do potholes, but everything else. So signs, signals, uh, striping, and all that is handled by Transportation Management. One of the main programs that we wanted to highlight tonight for you is neighborhood traffic calming. And Obviously, you know, one of the main concerns that we have expressed to us by citizens in our uh, community are vehicles speeding through neighborhoods. And so we've gotten a couple, um, we've had some communications with some members of the community down here. I live in this community, by the way. I'm a District 6 resident, Crowley Pride Unified, uh, Kirshner. Um, so um, we have received a few uh, communications, and so we're looking into a few in this area. So if you've communicated through your HOA president, which I know uh, one of the folks has, um, and they reach out to the city, we'll have a service request and you can track it that way. But just wanted to explain a little bit, this slide just really just explains a little bit about the program and what it does. Essentially, um, we go into the situation that you described to us, we review it, we try to see if there's uh, things that we could implement from an engineering perspective. It could be speed cushions, it could be uh, a, a speed table or something along those lines. We see if there's something that we could do. Uh, an incidence where there might be a stop sign, you say you need a stop sign, we'll go in and we'll do a stop sign analysis to see if it's warranted uh, based upon traffic. And so our group does all of that. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, 
So this just talks a little bit about when it was uh, instated in terms of March 22, the, the most deployed um, traffic calming measures, the speed cushions and tables like I talked about. And I do have a picture at the end just to show you what that is because I know everybody's kind of like, some people are like, what is that exactly? But they are rubber devices. We used to have, and you might have seen this in some of the older parts of town, which we have a few in our district, where you had the speed table or the, uh, gosh, the speed hump all the way across the road. Um, we, we've kind of gone away from that. We, the city completely went away from that for a while, and so we brought the program back, but we brought it back with something that's a little bit easier to install, easier to maintain, easier to see when you're driving, and hopefully has the same results in terms of slowing traffic down in your neighborhood. Next slide, please. And so that's the speed cushion there. We'll get into a whole bunch of detail on the left in terms of speed cushion, but those, those gaps will allow a, an emergency vehicle, large fire truck, et cetera, to travel through there without having that bump. An ambulance, let's say, you know, you don't want to necessarily have that that you would on a larger one. We, we really, and yesterday I learned uh, through one of the folks I work closely with, we've installed one speed table, but essentially those would be installed where you have a crosswalk and you want to elevate it a little bit. And so the effectiveness of that really is bringing, bringing um, any pedestrians who are walking across that into the line of sight of the vehicles and make it a little more pro uh, pr pronounced in terms of driving over it regularly. Because most of the time, as you would imagine, those kinds of issues happen when it's a community that you're familiar with, right? It's right around your house. It's, it's the driving around the home that does that. Next slide, please. So the main thing, my Fort Worth app, you know, you'll hear a lot of us in the city of Fort Worth talk about that, but that is essential in terms of us as residents contacting the city about anything. I recently had to get my uh, recycling bin replaced because my lid was torn up. Um, so I went into the app and I mean, they came out and replaced it within a couple days. So the same thing goes for my department. Um, anything might not be just a couple days, depends on what it is. But um, if you get in that My Fort Worth app, you'll also have an opportunity to put in information about your neighborhood traffic calming request and that will trigger us to investigate. You'll get a service request number. You can track it that way. We can track it that way. I'm probably over time already. We'll be back at the table. If you have any questions, please come back and see us. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, now we're gonna pass it over to the Parks and Recreation Department. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is Lori Gordon. I'm the planning manager of the Park and Recreation Group. Uh, my group, the Park and Recreation Group, we have several different departments that fall under our umbrella. One is planning, which is what I'm in charge of. There's design and development, which actually takes the parks that are purchased and or dedicated by uh, uh, this, uh, oh goodness, subdivision ordinance. Thank you very much. If I could ramble here a minute more. Um, and then we also have uh, this uh, park athletics and golf, and then we have the community centers that are all fall with under our purview. So what I'm going to talk about tonight are a couple exciting projects that are happening with the um, within the land aspect of uh, District 6. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, my graphics are in black and white, so I do apologize, but this is Primrose Station. This is along the Chisholm Trail Parkway, and this is a unique opportunity that uh, we worked with the developer and with Open Space to have parkland dedication as well as open space dedication. Uh, this development, at, when it was in its inception, was going to have multifamily housing, which it still has, two different uh, de developments of that, and single family housing. The single family housing went away, and they decided that they wanted to give something to the city, and so so they uh, are going to dedicate the, the creek and the natural spaces to the city as open space, and then we'll be receiving this as the first phase of the park. There'll be a, a, an area that has a more manicured lawn in the center. Uh, the darker gray colors that you see are sidewalks, and the, uh, the future plan for this, the master plan, includes a playground, a, a shade structure, and then there'll be other walkways that will be going through the open space. And if you could go to the next slide, please. So this gives you a little bit larger picture of what's going on. So that circle that was on the previous slide is up at the top of the page. And then if you, you look and see the grayer lines, those do a connection through the development. Those are the, that's the area that'll be dedicated as open space. And then w this also connects into the Lano Springs development. So we've talked with the Lano Springs HOA and we're gonna be taking over their green belt that bisects the subdivision and connect it down uh, to the roadway down at the bottom of the page. What is also going to happen is we'll have trails that go over to the west that connect over into Benbrook Lake. 
So there's going to be a large circular trail system that's going to be, uh, this will be one of the uh, trailhead locations for it. So next slide. And then a couple other things that we have going on in the district right now. We have uh, the, a couple of things that are in con under construction, uh, the Parkwood East Park uh, Development, Trails Lake Estates Park Development. Uh, those are on construction and are uh, scheduled to be finished this year. And then Rock Creek Ranch Park, the large park we purchased in southwest Fort Worth, is under master planning phase. Uh, we've done a, a consultant selection that should be starting to kick off within the next month or two. There'll be public meetings that uh, your neighborhood associations will put out. Uh, for you to notice so you can come to the meetings about those. And then um, we also have uh, West Haven Park is uh, under design phase and will be uh, going into construction uh, next year. So any questions anyone has? Do you All have right. a map of where those are? Um, I could get that to Davia and have it posted for on the website if that would work for you all. Know. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Appreciate that. This one for the short guys, was it? That's for sure. Appreciate that. Oh, okay, you're up there. I'm Commander Smith. I'm the I'm Andre Smith. I'm Commander of South Division, and this is Lieutenant Meadows. He's filling in for West Division right now. You can go to the next slide, please, if you don't mind. So this map here, it's not the city of Fort Worth. That's just South Division alone. That's South Division. That's the area we're responsible for. As you can see, we extends from Barry down to pretty much Burles, and we have, so you can see the challenges that we have in, in patrolling and, and fighting crime in this area. Next slide, please. So as you can see, this is our offenses from January to this year. We're, we're holding pretty steady at, uh, with aggravated assaults. So aggravated assaults are offenses, assault offenses that display of a weapon, threat of a weapon, and so that's what aggravated assaults would be. Uh, the aggravated assaults, FV, those are domestic violence, family violence. Uh, uh, offenses. Deadly conduct would be shooting at somebody, road rage incidents, those, those type of crimes. Robberies are kind of self-explanatory. Next slide. And that is for offenses from last year. You kind of see our, and this is just a portion of South Division. This isn't all of it. It's just the beats that fall in Council District 6. Thanks. And these are property crimes offenses, and uh, this is from January to now, which we're you see 10 auto thefts, but that's actually pretty good considering this time of year. So we're, we're holding steady. We have a property crimes team that addresses the property crimes related offenses, which are auto theft, burglary, burglary residents, and they do a good job of, of identifying. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you have a uh, chart that compares both? For From last year to this year? <clears throat> yeah, up, up top is, is the comparison. Yeah. Did you want to go back to the, see the, the previous slide? Oh, okay, okay, yeah. And, um, okay, we're done with the next slide. District 6, and again, that's from last year's offenses. So you can see we have 56 auto thefts, 15 burglary commercials, 15 residential. So there's been a, yeah, auto thefts have been a, a big time problem, as, 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 and, and not just South Division, but the divisions overall within the city. So. What are those, what is the I, I-18 on that other, on the previous slide? It's, it's probably the beat. Yeah, that's the beat. Okay. So I-18, I so each division is broken up into smaller areas that we call beats to identify issues. Is there a particular type of car that they're going after? Uh, and it, typically it was the Hellcats and, and Chargers, those type of vehicles. And we also had a period where they were still in Kias. There was some type of TikTok challenge or something like that related to Kias, so a lot of the Kia vehicles were being stolen as well. Sure. Thank you, sir. Like he said, I'm Lieutenant Matthew Metters. I'm here uh, to represent West Division. Commander Ricks couldn't be here, so she sent me instead. Um, I am the actual lieutenant over King District. So when you look at this map, you'll see L and K. Uh, you mentioned K, K is for King District. Uh, King District has three beats that are encompassed by District 6. So when you look at the map, it's K16, K18, and K19. All of those fall in District 6, so that's specifically what I'll be talking about today. Yep. 
So I don't have any pretty charts uh, like Commander Smith did, and the numbers are pretty small. Um, they will be uh, available. Um, but just to kind of give you a basic rundown, this is uh, our Como community. This is January, and as you can see, it's January 24, 23, and 22. Um, it kind of shows you where we are to date. As of right now, all of our violent crimes are down uh, to date compared to previous years. So right now we're doing pretty well on the next one. And the same is going to be for our, uh, if you look, this is our February, February 24, 23, and 22. And again, um, uh, all of our crimes, minus our uh, crimes against property, have been down over year on year, which is nice. So our King 18 and our King 19, that's everything south of 20, uh, west of Granbury Road, basically to, Grand, uh, to Benbrook. So 20 all the way down uh, to Benbrook, Granbury Road, Benbrook. So uh, King 18, King 19, kind of Hewland Mall area, all the way Brian Urban area. Um, so if you kind of look at this, I actually, with the broke it the way they broke it down, it's January to February, so it's two months in turn. Um, so as of right now, we're actually a little higher on our uh, crimes against persons um, for King 18 and King 19. Let you go up, next one. And the same for our, uh, our property crimes uh, in the sense of, just like he's saying, uh, our Stolen vehicles is really what got us. And like you're saying, what vehicles, Kias are what got us the most. Uh, that, that TikTok trend really hurt us in the sense of law enforcement trying to get those. Um, speaking of which, we don't have a specific date yet, but please keep your eye out. We are teaming up with Kia, and we are going to have an event where you can actually, if you drive a Kia, you can have your Kia reflashed to where that TikTok challenge won't affect it. Um, so please keep an eye out for that because we're going to put it out whenever we get it. We don't have exact date yet, but we are going to be working on that because as you, if you look at these numbers, I know they're kind of small, especially when you're looking at this big chart. Uh, the auto thefts are really what killed us. Quick, quick about yeah, good, and most, I'm not sure if you're aware or not. We just moved into our new facility right across the street at 3501 West Reisinger. So we're open, we're open for business. If you feel like you can come in, not arresting people there, so don't, don't bring anybody there. We're not open for that type of business. But, but yeah, but it's up and running. You don't have uh, the business hours listed. I went the other day, and there's nothing that tells us what times you're open. Okay, well, typically, 7 to 4, but we'll make sure I get something posted. And I think we also probably need to update that on the website as well, too. So. But thank you. Does anybody have any additional questions? If not now, we'll stick around for a little bit if you have specific questions regarding individual beats. A lot of your beat officers will be here as well, MPOs, for the specific beats. My main concern, this is my first council meeting, is um, we just discovered squatters in our neighborhood, and I would like to inquire how common that is and if it's, you know, the whole district, if this is just a fluke instance in my neighborhood. Um, I was just curious. How many times you run into that? Yeah, the, the squatters can be a little, a little tricky, right? So um, we, ha we haven't necessarily experienced squatters. We have experienced some of the property theft related to rental properties. This is the organization Progress Residential. They, they own a bunch of uh, residential properties that they lease out, and somehow they give this code out. So we've had issues with people going in there and selling appliance items, not necessarily the squatters themselves, though. So there's not, like, a problem of squatters in the not that I'm aware. What, what neighborhood do you live in? Human Heights. Okay. Yeah, not that I'm aware of, though. But if you want to give us a specific address, we can... It's have you... next door to me. Okay. So it's been a problem since last Thursday. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll get with you after this and see if we can help you with that. Do you happen to know who the property owner is of that? Yeah. Okay. We've been in contact with the police, the HOA, the property owners, everybody. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Thank you so much. And I see Carmen, um, she works in our District 6 office. She's our constituent services director. Um, she has her cards available for any um, constituent concerns, including squatting. Um, I will, um, we will definitely look into that. We have already submitted an inquiry um, to our legal team as well. Um, with, with squatting, we have to go through several legal processes. Um, and there's a couple of hiccups that can restart the legal process. And so um, our legal team has been working on that. And thank you for bringing that up. Yes, ma'am. Is there a better number? Because I have your number, but I have reached out and I don't get an answer. The car she gave you has all of our contact, including her direct info. So we'll make sure to connect with you on that. 
Um, thank you again to um, TPW Parks and Fort PD for um, the updates you provided. Um, I also wanted to take a bit of time to be able to provide you with some council related <laughs> updates just on some um, projects um, that we've also been working on. Um, since we just ended with public safety, I did want to give you all a couple updates on what we've been working on based on the input that you all have been giving us. Um, first, we recognize that um, public safety is something that is extremely critical to a thriving and growing city. Um, and so we've really particularly been focused on um, uh, ensuring that we have staffing levels um, in all of our first response um, um, groups that provide excellent service to you all. Um, and so in this past budget cycle, um, based on all of the input that y'all gave us through the budgeting cycle, um, we increased staffing levels for our firefighters, um, our police department, and as well as provide additional supports for um, supportive services like hope outreach um, and domestic violence um, related services as well. Um, the other thing that we focus on in relation to public safety is we recognize that um, traffic safety is something that's really important. Um, and so in addition to advocating for um, MPOs and patrol officers to help make sure folks are driving safe, um, we've also been focused on making um, essential infrastructure improvements um, as well as traffic improvements, many of which you saw on the board. Um, one, um, several arterials are really important to a lot of us in this room, um, some including Risinger Road. Um, I'm really um, you know, proud of uh, the improvements that have been made. Um, not only have we added a couple additional um, stop signs, but we also ensured that at um, Risinger and Hewland that we'll have an intersection improvement. We know how dangerous that intersection is. I drive there multiple times a day, um, as well as Risinger and Garden Springs will now be getting a traffic light, um, thanks to the hard work of many in this room, um, as well as um, Risinger um, and Summer Creek has now been approved um, for a traffic signal as well. It's in design phase. We've been partnering with pr a private developer who's developing a residential development area to help cover the costs of that traffic signal as well. Um, and so that's in the development process and they're currently designing uh, that traffic signal. Um, go yes, ma'am. I just wanna make a comment. Can I, can, I, um, can I finish the, I know we're up recording it too. Okay, 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 good. Yes, ma'am, I'll, I'll come back to you, I promise, okay? Um, and, and Martin Phillips is here as well, but we will make sure you make the comment at the end. I just wanna make sure the good folks here before we wrap up. Um, but also, Risinger headed um, east as well. We know right by um, the Crowley ISD Stadium, um, Risinger hasn't been fully improved. And so um, uh, myself, TBW, private developers, um, as well as our development services team have been working hard. And we have uh, a lot of good traction on working to complete um, the, the full build out of Risinger Road from Crowley Road all the way to I-35. Crowley ISD has also been super helpful in those conversations. Um, and I look forward to being able to give a more substan substantial update, but progress is really being made on completing that uh, four lanes and a, and a median. Um, other arterials that I know are really important to y'all, McPherson um, is one that I know y'all see um, being widened as well, west of Chisholm Trail. Brewer Road is now finally gonna connect to Sycamore School Road. Um, so that's a really big um, project that is happening right now. I mean, we could go on and on and on about the arterials, but needless to say, um, that is super important. The other thing that I know some of you are interested in, and thank you for engaging our office, is the need for um, uh, street Im improvements and maintenance, um, particularly within our neighborhoods. Um, and so many of you and many of your neighbor presidents have submitted um, requests for neighborhood um, maintenance um, related projects. Continue to submit those. We will continue to connect with TPW to make sure that those tickets are put in. Um, and particularly from a council perspective, um, we're very much so vocal and will be vocal in this next budget cycle about the importance of ensuring that we have adequate funding so that we can um, improve neighborhood streets in a timely fashion and make sure that our streets um, don't deteriorate um, for too long. And ultimately, and these are the streets that we drive on most every day um, as the neighbors in this community. And so know that that is a big priority for us. Um, the other thing I will add is We've also been focused on um, affordability issues in the city of Fort Worth. Um, as city continue, the city continues to grow, um, our pocketbooks and our, our checks don't always grow as fast. Um, and so two of the things we've been focused on um, as a council office 
One is ensuring that anyone who works in the city of Fort Worth um, and serves our city and serves us um, can afford to live in this city. Um, and so we have been pushing um, for ensuring that our wages reflect what it costs to live in the city of Fort Worth for our employees. Um, and so since we've taken office, um, it was at $11 an hour, now it's at $15 an hour. In this budget cycle, um, I'm advocating for $18 an hour, hopefully to get to $22 an hour. How many of y'all have ever heard of the Alice Report done by United Way? So if you go online and look up United for Alice, it shows by county what it costs to live in a county. And in Tarrant County, um, it costs more than $20 an hour to live, and that's just for basic necessities, not including 10% in savings, not including a down payment on a new home, right? Um, and so we wanna make sure that our public servants um, here in the city of Fort Worth, who are serving us day in and day out, um, can afford to live in the city that we call home. The second thing we've been doing, um, I'm grateful for the mayor appointing me as the chair of neighbor equality and revitalization a committee um, and that committee we have just released a couple months ago a report um, including our neighborhood conservation plan um, which now expands our neighborhood improvement program not only to doing one neighborhood per year but investing in two neighborhoods per year um, which ensures that we're making bold investments in uh, revitalizing our neighborhoods across the city including here in district six um, and the second thing it does is there's an affordable housing strategy uh, many of you have probably been following the conversations in the city of Fort Worth related to affordable housing. I mean, one of the things we're looking at is um, leveraging resources to make bold investments and in development bonuses that will allow for housing um, of all types, but specifically um, from our office's perspective, um, housing um, that is attainable and that is for home ownership. Um, and so creating incentives um, in these single family developments to where housing prices um, are uh, set at such a rate to where folks um, like first time home buyers, like um, my chief of staff, Davia, who's recently uh, engaged and wanting to get married and wanting to buy a house in District 6, that um, um, home values don't go to the point where our next generation can't own homes. Um, and so if you're very interested in that work, um, please follow us um, with the NQRC. Um, that full report is online and over the next uh, several months and years, we'll be working to implement a lot of those recommendations in that plan. Um, the last couple things I'll say um, before closing out today is um, we've been really mindful of, of our, our zoning um, and land use um, and as a council, um, and as a council office, we've been working with our neighbors like Como neighborhood um, to ensure that we have land use um, that's compatible um, um, within our district. And so our district has painstakingly gone through every parcel in the district, um, and we're working to make sure that all zoning um, is compatible so that heavy industrial is next to a single family neighborhood, right? And making sure that we have good land use and future land use um, in our planning. Um, and the other thing is to make sure that we're setting up the stage for continued commercial development in our district. Um, many of y'all have seen a lot of commercial development activity on McPherson, the shops at Chisholm. Um, we're planning at Tavolo. Um, if you've gone to Tarleton State, um, you not only see that they're building their second building and working on their third, but we're also planning major commercial development. Um, and a lot of that is coming through zoning right now. I mean, so we're really mindful that in order to grow a, a strong District 6 and a strong city, we need to make sure that we have a strong commercial um, uh, property base in terms of tax base, but also um, in terms of making sure that we have excellent job opportunities and that we're on the cutting edge in terms of industries that we're recruiting to set up shop within our community. Um, finally, um, one thing that I'm really excited about that Lori touched on is Primrose Station. It just goes to show the, the power that's, uh, that uh, um, is in our hands when we partner with the private sector. Um, we heard from you all um, about the importance of uh, the park at Yano Springs. We know that it's had a lot of headaches with uh, the pond, um, and that um, park was slated to be transitioned over to the Homeowners Association. Um, after having a listening session with the neighbors at Yano Springs, um, we all came up with the solution that um, the city of Fort Worth probably uh, should take management over it. And um, we developed a management agreement to where the city of Fort Worth would manage the Yano Springs Park. Um, at the same time, in those same conversations, we were having conversations with Primrose Station, which is a 40 acre um, open space conservation park that adds more than 350 uh, acres of open space conservation park land that'll be available for us um, and future generations that live here in District 6. Um, and because of those two conversations being connected, 
we were able to get the private uh, private community to develop trails that wouldn't have otherwise happened in Yano Springs Park. Um, the vision not only is to connect to Benbrook Lake, as Lori said, but to connect to the Steve Hawkins development that is on the east side of the toll road. So a trail would go underneath the toll road um, into um, the new development developed by Steve Hawkins and the CP Hadley, and ultimately to get back to the Chisholm Trail Community Center. And so that is a huge amenity um, that um, is currently in development. If you drive down Chisholm Trail and you look to the left just before you hit Sycamore School Road, you will see Primrose Station um, and all of the dirt turning that is happening there. And the open space hasn't been uh, mowed down, so you can definitely tell where the open space area will be. Um, all that to say, um, we work for you, and a lot of these ideas aren't our ideas. It's ideas that we get from your engagement. I mean, so we have two uh, call to actions tonight. Um, the first being <laughs> continue to engage us um, with um, all of your, um, um, the services that you're needing, um, and then also to subscribe um, to our District 6 newsletter. Um, Carmen Ochoa curates um, our monthly newsletter in partnership with myself and Davia, who's our uh, district director in the office. I and mean, we provide relevant updates, council recaps, as well as um, community events that are happening in our community. So if your neighborhood is having an event like a garage sale, yard sale, we also put those things as well in the newsletter. So please subscribe and engage with us there. The second thing is we're allowing, um, we worked real hard to make sure that we allowed every resident to have access to zoning alerts so that when a zoning and land use application is submitted, anyone who subscribes to that newsletter by district can now get the alert directly. So you don't have to wait for your uh, HOA board to pass it down to you, you can get it directly. Um, so um, please subscribe to that for District 6 so that we make sure that as we're making decisions on zoning and land use, that we're hearing feedback from you as you're getting alerts so that we vote in a way that uh, makes sense for our district. Um, and then the last thing um, that I'll share is make sure that um, you stay engaged with our comprehensive plan that is related to the zoning process and we'll have public meetings and there's actually one on the calendar for April 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Chisholm Trail Community Center. Um, that is so important because it sets the trajectory of our planning all the way up until 2050. Um, and so the more engagement that we have from you and your neighbors, the better. It helps us set things like future land use um, and strategies um, for growing our city um, in a way that'll set our city up for success for not only baby Janelle and baby Jameson, who's two months away from today, he will be here with us, um, but also for your kids, your grandkids, and your family members and loved ones. So um, please, please, please continue to engage um, with us in the process um, and know that we are here um, working day in and day out for you. I did promise my good neighbor here and friend that um, we would leave some time for some remarks um, for comments, but I'm also happy to answer maybe a few questions and then I'll stick around after um, the concluding of tonight's event so that we can continue to have conversations and we can connect you with um, all the wonderful resources that are here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's a, it's a comment and I, it's almost like, sounds like a parent, which I am. And as far as talking about the sidelines, lights, traffic lights and all that, when the light turns green, don't immediately go. Right. I have almost been run into, I don't know how many times. So maybe count to five or something like that. And the people in back of you honk, just wave at <laughs> and then go. Such salient advice. Um, I, especially as a, a parent of a newborn, um, I'm abundantly cautious when driving, especially when she's in the car. I mean, that's good advice for all of our neighbors. Um, we have a responsibility to one another when we're driving on the road. I mean, so please, please, please uh, make sure that you're driving safe and driving responsibly um, because we all want to get home to our loved ones. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. So I asked you this last time about the, the weather and the rain, and some of these streets are impassable, even with a small bit of rain. So yeah. at what point in time are you guys going to say, diminishing returns, we can't keep building, and we got to let this water go off somewhere? Yeah. Because right now, I'm telling you, like, I don't know if it's, is it rising here or whatever that one piece of land is? If it rains a little bit, I can't drive it. Yeah, if you send that to me, we'll look into it specifically. I mean, absolutely, we're very mindful um, when we're approving development. 
um, of how it, uh, the potential impacts that it has on um, our infrastructure, our capacity. One of the things that we're very big on is making sure the development, um, when it's coming in through the zoning process, that we ensure that infrastructure is also in place. And I know we talked about this before last time. Um, Lauren Prier is here and some of our development services might be here, but they'll tell you, I'll hold up a project until I'm confident that it'll provide the adequate um, infrastructure. I mean, that's because I feel the same way as you all do. I, I live in the neighborhood, grew up in the neighborhood, um, and I wanna make sure that, um, you know, I can go to some of our favorite restaurants when I retire from this thing and y'all not run me out of town. So <laughs> I plan on being here a long time. So um, uh, well received. Um, stormwater infrastructure is something that's really important for the city. Um, and it's something that um, we're playing catch up with too because it's a fast growth city. And that's why I'm abundantly um, thoughtful and thorough with what we do in land planning and zoning. Yes, ma'am. There's quite a few neighbors in my neighborhood that in are- Metals <coughs> of Ridge, right? Uh -huh. yeah. That are concerned about the proposed street maintenance fee. Me too. Okay. Um, they are not Let's just say they're not for it. Me either. Okay. I will pass that on. They will be David's already heard that, so <laughs> that's why he's smirking. I, I will elaborate on that. Um, you know, I think, I think infrastructure um, is a basic function of government and should be considered um, within our general fund and within our PAYGO fund. I mean, if there's something that we need to do to allocate more of our tax rate while also being mindful that we want to lower the tax rate to pay go funds, I'm all about that. But when we start creating additional fees, there are additional taxes. I mean, I'm very concerned about that's, that. That's right where everyone is. Yes, ma'am. We're still concerned about our streets, although we've been told they're all fair. Condition, and it'll be five or six years. Yeah. Some of them aren't going to make five or six years. I was thinking about your neighborhood when I mentioned what I mentioned about we need to have a more robust funding stream for um, neighborhood street program and maintenance. Um, I could also go think of a number of other neighborhoods, Quail Ridge 1 and 2, um, Candor Ridge. If I started going down the list of all the neighborhoods, I would probably come by your neighborhood by listing them out. But neighborhood streets program, I think, is a really important uh, program, and it deserves more funding. So that's something you'll be... Yes, ma'am. Promoting for us. I did a last budget cycle. I'll do it again this cycle. I was somewhat successful last cycle. I hope to be more successful this cycle with your help. My neighbors will be glad to hear that. Thank yes, ma'am. On Granbury Road, within a three block area, we now have two new liquor stores. And about another three blocks down, it's another yeah. liquor store. Why do we suddenly have so many liquor stores and car washes? Agreed. Um, so, with the car washes, I was in, I was involved in writing uh, the car wash ordinance with two of my other colleagues in the legal department, um, and so we have um, ordinances in place that ensure that um, that car washes aren't going to land on every block. Um, I've already put an inquiry in months ago with legal, and we're currently writing an ordinance to do similar things with other uses, similar to liquor stores. Um, and so I don't want to go into too much details on that because. Um, there's some legalities around it, but know that I agree and we're working to create an ordinance that won't allow them to be within a certain radius of one another. Community customer. Top Sorry. Street, phase one. Um, regarding some of the uh, renewal organizations, uh, Main Street Renewal Progress, that have very large concentrations of ownership in our neighborhood, but are extraordinarily unresponsive. Uh, we, uh, we had an incident with uh, a break-in to a house. Uh, people were partying inside. Uh, patrol was able to respond, but without a complaining witness, nothing could be done. And we know how these parties turn out. Uh, we've seen examples right. from Frisco all the way across the, the Metroplex where uh, drinking, substance use, disputes, weapons, and casualties. Uh, it's not idle speculation. We don't need that, don't want that, um, but we cannot get any response out of these organizations. The city, at last I knew, the city of Fort Worth had an ordinance that said if you own multifamily or you own three adjacent properties, you had to have a registered property agent with the city. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that it would be in our neighborhood's best interest in your work with legal if we could pursue something analogous to the alarm permit. If you are a property management company, you have a 24 by 7 registered agent who can assert the rights of the owners uh, with a minimum or a, a 
required five to six, whatever patrol. We don't need them sitting on site for half an hour when there's calls pending. So it's something that patrol can get to, um, get a, uh, an authoritative legal response to assert the rights of the rollers, uh, where code can get a response and not have to chase people for a month. Uh, there, when you look at the ownership patterns, Main Street Renewal might manage 10 adjacent houses. When you look at the ownership, the ownerships are alphanumeric reads mm -hmm. scattered across the United States. Yeah. I believe those are deliberately being structured to avoid the adjacent ownership, mm -hmm. as well as the multifamily. Mm -hmm. um, we need a much more responsive, or you know, these organizations receive benefits for being neighborhood renewal. Put those benefits on ice. It's either play ball or lose it. Yeah, they don't absolutely. need any, they, they don't participate well in the neighborhoods, they don't need any special qualifications mm -hmm. or privileges until their act improves and improves a whole lot. Yeah, this is something that I'm very concerned with. Um, it's something that I wasn't too much of an expert in before hearing this issue. I mean, it's something that, um, you know, you have my commitment to work with legal on to explore every tool that we can do to make sure that this is addressed. The other thing I will add to that, and this is something that ties back into the housing um, situation that I was discussing earlier, um, I'll be requesting a report. Mark, consider this an official request and then I'll submit it later. Um, but um, um, I'll be requesting a report for corporate ownership of um, housing in, in Fort Worth. Uh, I suspect um, that many of our um, housing opportunities are corporate commercially owned, um, and I'm very concerned about the long-term ramifications of that for the city, especially for transitioning assets onto the next generation and the lack of inventory for home buyers to be able to get into a home. And so this is a part of a conversation I'm very much so interested in. Before I, before y'all submitted these inquiries, I didn't know much about it, but now I'm fired up about it. So we'll, we'll definitely work on it now that I know about it. There's approximately 1,453 homes in uh, phase one and the ownership percentage um, or the, the number of those homes are they're managed by the two major property management companies, Progress and Main Street, are significant. Uh, and if one of those decides to be a bad corporate citizen, the damage that they can do far exceeds what a multifamily, and, and, you know, I mean, I'm right, up, right across from the tracks from the Sycamore Point, right. Uh, you know, right by the UP tracks there on Sycamore School. Yeah. I don't know if that property has ever gotten better, but um, what they can do, the negative effects that they can have on the neighborhood far exceeds um, what any of the other um, entities that goes bad uh, right. can do. This is something we really need to address sooner rather than later. What neighborhood uh, do you live in? Meadow Creek, uh, from Hawkwood Trail, uh, UP tracks on the east side, to McCart, Sycamore School south, uh, basically, to here, this is the end of phase two, mm -hmm. right here, uh, just north of Rising. Thank you for that. Well received. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have time for one or two. We're done early, but if you have one or two pressing questions, I'll stay to answer those and then we'll wrap up. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Your are part of the one of the new residents, and um, we've been here about 18 months now. And since we've been here, we, I personally, have videos and photos from 15 wrecks on this curve right here. It's called Dead Man's Curve to the neighbors who were there before me. Um, it's traumatizing. It's traumatizing. They came and knock on my door. They want fire extinguishers. They want me to call 911, and I will give the police props. I appreciate you coming so quickly. The first responders come very quickly. The last accident ejected three men, and as I'm, they're banging on my door at three o'clock in the morning, and I walk out, and we've had two deaths there. And yes, I know that the majority of them are drunk drivers, and I know that we can't control that. What I've been asking to do, and I've been working with calming traffic with no success, is to please put some signs back up, put us a street light up there. When you come off of here, if you don't live here, especially if you're intoxicated, we live here, we know you gotta make that jug, right? right. You gotta make that jag. We know that. But even when my company comes, I tell them, don't go here. Like the young lady said earlier, don't, you know, don't go. They're running the red lights. And if we could get some concentration right here for our neighborhood and the speeding, I have spoke with two officers recently who have assured me that now that they're aware of it, they're working on it, and I'm appreciative of that. It's not fair for anyone. 
intoxicated or not do not know that that road ends and they're hitting that and they hit that concrete culvert right so I'm asking that somebody could get me in touch with somebody who really cares and can look through my videos my photos and look at all the calls well that's the, this is the whole reason why we do that what why we do what we're doing right now and I'm looking at Martin and he is looking at a Google map and he's also going to connect with you immediately after this to make sure that we get that address Martin is my go-to Martin Phillips is my go-to um, um, man for um, issues exactly like you're describing and so anytime we get those requests we submit to him his team is on it to try to figure out ways we can address that so yes ma'am the other thing that um, I failed to mention that is um, noteworthy because she brought up um, emergency response. Um, I was recently appointed um, to serve on the um, ad hoc committee for emergency medical response. Um, and we have another meeting on um, April 16th and I encourage y'all to watch that meeting. Um, we have been um, exploring um, not only what our current EMS system is today, um, but options to improve that. Um, and we have several different options on the table that we're about to make decisions on um, that will dramatically improve EMS um, response in this city. So um, I encourage you to watch that. Um, know that um, it is my personal preference that we get an ambulance here in four minutes. We will get there over time. Um, but this uh, ad hoc committee is really important and it will really save thousands and over the years, hundreds of thousands of lives for what we're doing in this committee. So. Please make sure you watch the meeting on April 16th and then the subsequent meetings after that. It's a really big deal that um, will have um, lasting um, positive impacts in our community. Um, I don't see any more hands, so that means that oh, one more. I, I spoke it into existence. <laughs> the past six months, I live in Summer Creek and I'm heading north on Granbury Road. License plates from Alaska, Nebraska, Arkansas, Idaho, I've never seen so many out-of-state license plates up and down my roads. And yesterday, I was at the stoplight, maybe 9 o'clock in the morning, at Granbury Road and Columbus Trail, and the car next to me on the red light just rode on through. I've seen many times we're at, on Granbury Road near Suffolk, or, or near that railroad, cars, red light, cars just keep on going. And what, a, is there anything I can do? I mean, try to whip out your cell phone and take a, I just can't believe how many people are just driving through So, there. one, doing what you just did helps, especially with all these um, men and women of our PD here. Um, also, um, you know, whenever you see things like that, it's important that you report it to our office as well as to PD so that they know the specific locations where it's happening most frequently. Um, and as a, in terms of a budget process, we need to make sure that we have patrol that can, um, uh, that can um, enforce our traffic laws. Um, I n no one wants to write a ticket, but if it comes down to writing a ticket and saving a life or not writing a ticket and someone blows through the stoplight, I I'll say I've been to one too many funerals um, for our residents um, that were involved in uh, traffic accidents that could have been avoided if someone didn't blow through a light or wasn't speeding. Um, and so, um, you know, what you just did is what we need you to do. See something, say something, so the city can do something. Um, and know that in this budget, we would need y'all to say something so that when I'm advocating for more um, support in our traffic division, um, we can get that so we can make sure that folks are driving safe in our community. Oh. What time of day? Okay, I think I was driving to my exercise class, which was 8 o'clock, and I was at heading north on Granbury Road, Columbus Trail, there's a light, and this, like a limousine, older car, not a limousine, but a town big car. older car, town car, just floats on through. And I looked around and I said, well, I guess I don't see any other cross traffic, and he just decided he could go. There's the traffic on Summer Creek, Columbus, yeah, try it at Columbus Trail and Sycamore is the next yeah. center. Sounds like you're on an Officer Vargas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have seen you there, yes. And then down, you know, on Granbury Road where you make a jag to cross over the railroad tracks and do that Wabash Avenue, right there I see a lot of cars just floating through on a red line.
Sounds like you've got it taken care of. Officer Vargas will definitely do that. He's also a neighborhood president in District 6. So um, thank you for your service, sir. Um, we are at time, um, but that, we will still be around here um, to answer any questions and any concerns that you have. We'll be here till 730. Um, so thank you all again. And for those of you watching online, please remember to share this video with folks you know. Thank you all. You all have a blessed night. Take care.